この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますフィンナナオンシャー。Essentially pioneering the rhythm action genre. In 1999, alongside the follow up to Parap the Rapper titled Um Jamalami, Nana Onsha also brought us the subject of this episode Vib Ribbon. Came here for Vib Ribbon. It's in the thumbnail. Let's not waste any time. Vib Ribbon is a video game. But the Vib Ribbon is also the name of the infinitely long line in the center of the screen. Upon it walks Vibri, a character described by Masaya Matsuura as having hopped out of the digital world and into ours. Vibri walks across the Vib Ribbon. Avoiding obstacles that are generated based on the music that is being played at the time. Vib Ribbon's most famous selling point is that the player can use their own music CDs to create new levels on which to play. Once the game has been loaded into the PlayStation's limited RAM, the disc can be swapped out for an audio CD of choice. This will generate obstacle courses to complete based on the music that is being played. As for the game's default selection of songs, Nana On Sha worked closely with Japanese electronic outfit Laugh and Peace, formed of Toshiyuki Kagiyama and Koichi Hirota, plus guest vocalist Yoko Fujita. Matsuura turned down Laugh and Peace's compositions over and over again until he felt they had successfully created music that fitted the world of Vibrabut. As Matsuura states in a year 2000 interview with PlayStation Europe, this is contradictory, as Vibriban was designed in such a way that no particular type of music can be associated with it, and yet he had a very clear vision of what type of music would suit Vibriban. Press coverage from the time incorrectly listed the band as Laugh and Beats. And this mistake has stuck for a very, very long time. One last time for the record, the band's name is Laugh and Peace. If I see anybody refer to the band as Laugh and Beats, I'll torture poor Isabel some more. I already took her tongue and spleen, what else do you want? <laughs> Development on Vibribbon started in the early 90s, where it took on a different style. 
Actually, at this time, the only thing in the game that remained consistent was the ability to use audio CDs. The game did not feature a long line, it did not have the title Vib Ribbon, nor did it feature the character Vibri. At this stage in development, the game would generate a world full of vivid colours and characters based on the CD inserted. Something about this version of the game disappointed Matsuura, to the point where the game was shelved for some time. After Parap the Rapper's release, Matsuura enlisted the help of a nearby programmer living in Japan, John Belamonte, to rework the abandoned project, eventually leading to the version that hit retail. It was unprecedented demand from consumers that brought the Japanese rhythm game Vibribbon to Europe in 2000. To learn this side of the story, we need to talk about Sean Layden, a man who would later serve as CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment America from 2014 to 2019. But back in 1999, Layden was the newly appointed Vice President of Sony Computer Entertainment Europe after having worked in both London and Tokyo in their respective arms of the company. With his knowledge, contacts and experience, he funneled time and manpower into bringing Vibribbon to Europe. Quite frankly, we'd have never gotten the game over here if it wasn't for his love of Japanese video games, his networking within Japan, or his proficiency in speaking, reading and writing Japanese. All hail Lord Layden. Because Sony's separate arms were more independent back in these days, American gamers were never granted the gift of Vibribbon. Something to do with Sony America's very real bias against 2D looking games, of which there is plenty of evidence out there. At E3 2014, Layden, having just become CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment America, appeared on stage with Vibribbon in the background and he was talking about his experiences at Sony, and how the company continually seeks to innovate. But he showed Vibribbon. Vibribbon was trending. Twitter was awash with tweets about Vibribbon. I repeat, Vibribbon was trending. Vibribbon. Yeah, give it up for Vibribbon. A personal favorite of mine, that really embodies the PlayStation spirit. That's why it's a tremendous pleasure and a unique thrill for me to introduce on this stage the worldwide premiere of gameplay footage for Mortal Kombat X. Understandably, we were all incensed. I can't even begin to imagine how American gamers were feeling after being robbed of Vibribbon 14 years earlier. After seeing the reaction online, Layden immediately set to work, bringing back Vibribbon on the PS3, a console already shadowed by the new and successful PlayStation 4. Within the year, Vibribbon launched on PlayStation 3's store, and this version supports CD swapping with any audio CD placed in the PS3 console. There was a real Vibribbonaissance at this time. Everyone was buzzing about the game again, and for the first time ever, America could finally play it too. So that's the history of Vibribbon. But what's the game like? You know what? I might get ridiculed for this, but... I really don't think it's fun. I didn't as a kid, didn't as a teen, and don't even now as an adult. Granted, the idea of a game generating its levels from a music CD was certainly exciting back in 1999, when Vibribbon hit PS1 in Japan, I just don't think the tech itself is all too impressive. As a rhythm game connoisseur, I honestly believe most of the game's generated button presses are completely out of sync with the music it's trying to match to.
The obstacles come in four shapes, a triangular hole, a wavy line, a tall block, and a loop. These are each mapped to their own button. It wouldn't be so bad were it just those four obstacles, but the shapes can also come in combined forms. A loop on top of a tower, a wavy hole, any of these two shapes can be mixed together. Both buttons have to be pressed at exactly the same time, and quite often out of time with the music track. Every time you miss, Vibri squeals with an ungodly squeak, and the screen starts to shake, which just makes playing the game even harder. I know some of you watching might be nostalgic for this game, and that's fine. I'm nostalgic for it too. But go back to play Vib Ribbon today, you'll see what I'm getting at. This tech isn't actually very good, or accurate. Without the Laugh and Peace soundtrack, the CD scanning, and the vector style graphics, there would be very little here to actually recommend. And even those elements aren't without significant flaws. The soundtrack is grainy and staticky despite being CD audio, and therefore potentially high quality. The CD scanning tech doesn't work with every CD, and it pains me that Tommy Airline doesn't work because I wanted to bring you the Sushi Bites theme song. And in regards to the graphics, some things are deliberately obtuse, like your score being glyphs that float around the top of the screen, or certain CDs causing the screen to go upside down, or you have to play it from impractical angles. Vib Ribbon is a solid example of a game that I think many people will wax nostalgic about while conveniently forgetting its issues. And I totally understand that, some games age better than others, and while Vib Ribbon has a timeless, Lunar Lander-esque appearance, it hasn't aged as well as, say, Super Mario Bros. 3 or Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. I wouldn't be able to recommend it just based on the impressive things it does. It fails as an enjoyable gameplay experience, and ultimately, that is what matters. Vib Ribbon would later receive two sequels, Vib Ripple and Mojib Ribbon both released for the PlayStation 2, and both containing extremely different gameplay and art styles. Mojib Ribbon may not look accessible at first, but with a guide and some willpower, there is an immensely enjoyable rhythm game underneath. In this game, the player must dip their pen brush into ink, and use it to write sick rap bars. After playing through the game, you can even write your own raps and melodies, which I believe you are able to share online via network connection. Vib Ripple has you playing as Vibri, jumping on top of photographs. With a USB camera and a network connection, players could import and share their own photographs for use within the game. Vib Ribbon will always have a soft spot in my heart, and with its European 20th anniversary coming up, there might not have been a better time to check this game out than right now. Even though I slam the game for being unforgiving and rough, I still consider it an important part of Masaya Matsuura, Nanon Sha, and Sony's legacies. This has been Sushi Bites. Thanks for watching.